I think it's a people business at the end of the day, right? Uh, that's all it is, whether you're an agent, whether you're entitled, whether you're a lender, whatever you are, it's all relationships. You're going to go with the person you like and you trust. Hello, welcome to episode 198 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Bashoy Habib, real estate attorney and broker. Founding Levacy Legal, a Florida law firm, Bashoy represents real estate investors, developers, and lenders. Less than a year ago, Bashoy co-founded Capstar Real Estate, a hybrid brokerage with 20 agents that specializes in off-market deals. Throughout our conversation, Bashoy shares how his law background has translated into his real estate career, how his brokerage is securing off-market deals, and how much of an impact promoting his brand through social media has had on his business. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you'll find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Be sure to click the link in the episode description to claim a free digital issue. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents Podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Bashoy Habib. Be sure to follow him on all social media platforms at Attorney Bashoy. I have all of his channels linked in the episode description. Really, the way I like to start everything off is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit. You have a, a really diverse background uh, and love to kind of dive into several aspects of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, I appreciate you having me on the show. Um yeah, so uh, my story starts back in the day when I was a kid. My dad was uh, involved in real estate. Um, he was a pharmacist, uh, immigrant, came here, learned real estate, and found out that's the way that people make money in this country and build wealth. And so he was a pioneer in that sense. Uh, as a young kid, I would you know, drive around with him, go to his property, see what he was doing. And I just always thought it was cool that he was his own boss. He made his own schedule. So I always thought that that was kind of neat. I went to um, undergrad and uh, got a finance degree. I was like, well, let me get my law degree um, just to have it. I didn't plan on practicing. And then I got out of law school in the market. This was 2012. And the market was, uh, was obviously not that great for real estate. So so I ended up practicing law. I, I went up north to New York. Uh, I got my license in New York to practice. I worked for a uh, the biggest developer of hotels in Manhattan. Um, did a bunch of cool deals up there for a few years. And then I came back down to Florida for personal, like family reasons. And uh, when I came back down here, I just kept going, kept going, did a little bit of finance law, ended up working with lenders, with builders, with obviously investors. That's my bread and butter. And then, you know, one day I looked up and it had been, I don't know, eight years. And I was like, I'm pretty good at this law thing. I might as well just stick with it. So um, that's when I really kind of went full force into, because honestly, for, for a while, I still wasn't sure how long I was going to practice law. And then I was like, no, I'm, I'm too good at this. I, I put too much time and I know my value in this. So it's been 12 years now since I finished law school. And then, um, you know, having closed so many deals as, as a title agent, you know, pretty much everything that happens in a transaction um, from start to finish. And so I had my license as an agent when I was 18. Um, never, never like showed a property. It's all just been like internal transactions that I use it for, like my own stuff or family stuff. But I got approached uh, a year, about a year, year and a half ago by uh, my good friend, uh, Jake Schmidt, who's a top producing agent in Florida and um, or in Tampa Bay, I should say. He's like, yo, let's start a brokerage. I'm like, Cool. So I got my license as a broker and we started Capstar Real Estate. It's me, Jake, and our third partner, uh, Gabe Kozell. And uh, it's been a tremendous. We started in October. We have 17 agents uh, right now and it's been tremendous. It's slow few months, but it's picked up. Um, and the collaboration and the crossover between what I've, you know, my experiences then and my experiences now has been tremendous. So that's kind of where I am today. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely want to uh, dive into Capstar here in, in a moment. But, um, you know, drawing on your your 
you know, your legal expertise. And I have to imagine that that really helps uh, just, you know, make sure that transactions are going smoother. Uh, you, you know what potential pitfalls or maybe even, you know, hangups might be coming, you know, for people or for investors that you're working with. So how is that really, uh, you know, those skill sets, you know, really transition to each other? Yeah, um, that's that's the beauty of it. So, um, you know, anytime the agents have a potential issue, we really try to get ahead of it. Um, I always like to in our weekly meetings, um, we talk about I tell them, you know, these are the points that have the highest liability, right? Because I'm the guy that would know because I get all the problems. So these are the things that cause issues more often than not. This is probably not as big of an issue, right? X, Y and Z. I'm okay with letting that slide, but the reality is you absolutely have to have, you know, the seller's disclosure, right? That's the, that's the big one. I would say the predominantly, uh, the seller's disclosure issues are the biggest things that have been happening. And especially when things took off in 2020, um, through 2023 or whatever it was, and everybody was flipping and everybody was putting uh, uh lipstick on a pig. And then we had all sorts of just, you know, terrible, workmanship because everyone was just making money hand over fist. So we saw a ton of those, um, but the experience has been great. And then just helping facilitate the transactions in terms of any issues with title, any, you know, issues that, you know, whether it's a buyer or seller, anything like that, it's kind of easy. And then my partners balance me out because they have different experiences than me. So Jake's an agent. He knows, you know, how you want to you know, win over the, you know, the listing agreement, right? And then Gabe is an absolute guru with the off-market stuff, which is a whole other area that we've really uh, started to hone in on and differentiate ourselves from other brokerages. So you combine us all and it becomes a very lethal combination, which is, you know, something that differentiates us quite a bit. Right. So, you know, tell me about when this conversation started to to launch this brokerage, uh, you know, what was that like? And then what was it like, you know, say yes and diving, diving headfirst into it? Um, yeah. So Jake and I had known each other from uh, uh, from we had closed several deals together when I was at a law firm before before I'd opened my own law firm. And then, um, you know, we had a great working relationship. We had a great personal relationship. We became very good friends. We had a bunch of friends in common. And then, and so that started. So the, the seeds were planted a couple of years ago. We'd talk about it. We'd talk about it. Neither of us were ready. Um, I started my own law firm a year ago now, Levacy Legal. And so that was kind of where my head was at. And then, um, you know, uh, Jake was on my bachelor party with me. And when we went out there, one of the things we talked about um, was the the thing, the the brokerage cap store. And he's like, oh, I'm serious about it. Let's do it. And this was back in April of last year. So I was like, all right. So we started researching it. And then, you know, he pulled in Gabe. Uh, he's like the three of us. We all bring something different to the table. Um Jake really recruited the agents because that's what he does. So a lot of those people or all of those agents really, I think, came through Jake, maybe one or two through Gabe. Um, And so he had it all set up. You know, I talked through the logistics with him. I did the research. And, you know, from there it became um, it really proved to me the power of social media and the power of, you know, our collective networks, because I think it's really blown up in a way um, that I didn't imagine or understand it could. Um, I saw always joke with people, right? Because I've been a lawyer for 12 years now. Like I said, I started my own law firm last year. And, uh, and a lot of people didn't even know what I did because I had didn't have a big presence on social media at the time. Well, the Capstar stuff we did. And it was them there. My partners are bigger on social media and we have a, a, one of our agents who's good at it and she does our social media. And so, I mean, three or four times a week, people would hit me up, you know, asking me, Hey, are you still an attorney or do you just do the cap star stuff? And I'm like, no, I still work 70 hours a week as an attorney, <laughs> but nobody knows that. And so I love to say that in jest. It's, it's funny, but it's true. Um, but it shows me, you know, that, how successful we had been in marketing the brand and building that brand. And it's really, uh, I think we've positioned ourselves quite well in just six months in Tampa. I mean, people really know who we are and that's been the most fun part is like, it feels like the community's behind us because a lot of people know us and they support us and we do right by people. So I think that's been the most exciting and fun part of it all. 
Right. And when it comes to that social media presence and the, and the marketing itself, um, as a newer brand, what were, what were some of the things that you were doing to get your, your name out there and that brand out there? Cause Tampa, I mean, it is a very competitive market. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a people business at the end of the day, right? Uh, that's all it is. Whether you're an agent, whether you're entitled, whether you're a lender, whatever you are, it's all relationships. You're going to go with the person you like and you trust. And so with that, we each brought our own networks into the mix, right? And, uh, and if you know one thing about Jake, I keep talking about him because we're talking about the brokerage, but he's a people person. He knows everybody in town and he's only lived here six or seven years. You know, we and, and me and Gabe each have our own networks and they're kind of they overlap a little bit, but they're different. And so I think that helped really jumpstart us. Um, you know, we had such an advantage starting off. And then, like I said, I mean, I think we just we do right by people. We bring value to people. Uh, we're very good at what we're good at. Um, and so I think all of those factors together, uh, ha have helped catapult this into, again, I mean, we're, 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 we're just starting. I mean, we're not, it's not like we're taking a big market share or anything like that, but I'm really proud of the progress we've made. Um, and we're really doing something very different than, uh, I don't want to, I don't know if it's any other brokerage, but definitely most other brokerages, whereas we're attacking this in a way, non-traditional brokerages are right so um and that's kind of a different conversation about these stuff that we're doing off market the tools the resources the technology that we're leveraging to find deals that nobody else has found to get in contact with people that nobody thought was a seller and we find out they are a seller um so the whole off market side is just kind of crazy but that's that's kind of where we excel Right. And I definitely, I'd, I'd love to ask you uh, about some of those uh, tactics that you're taking, but I, you know, I also have to imagine that your, uh, your time and experience working with investors and in different deals that has to be helping bring in uh, deals as well. And, you know, really growing that network uh, for Capstar. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, we're, we're kind of firing on all cylinders right now. It's a very exciting time. Um, uh, you know, a lot going on. And I, I like to tell the boys, it's like our problem is probably that we want, you know, we have so much going on. And so the hard part for us and all three of us are extremely ambitious people. And so I, you know, I like to tell them like the hard part is just kind of honing in on a few things. And so truthfully, we're still figuring it out. You know, there's so many different angles we could take and we just don't want to spread ourselves too thin. So that's the problem we're having now is, uh, it's not a problem, but that's kind of where I see it is like, let's just lock in on three or four things. And so like, you know, the, the, you know, we're, we're starting to get commercial deals fall in our lap through our network. Um, and so it's, it's becoming something that we didn't know it could become in six months. Um, but, um, it's, it's been exciting. It's been tremendous and we have a lot of good problems to solve. Right. Right. I mean, those are having deals fall in your lap is a whole lot better than making thousands of phone calls and still sitting there twiddling <laughs> your thumbs. <laughs> uh, phone calls are uh, phone calls are an antiquated way of doing business. The uh, right. cold calls, I mean, they, they still work, but there's more efficient ways to do business. And uh, and I think that's what we're trying to prove. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, on the topic of the, um, the off market uh, listings and the off market deals, I think that's, you know, that really is a, a gold mine if you can tap into that resource in your market to have these deals that nobody else knows about because the competition, you know, you're, you're, you're not competing with anybody else. Uh, what are you guys doing to, to get in front of these uh, people that, you know, maybe weren't sellers before you met them? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing that we do is we adapt to the market. Um, I think that, um, you know, we have kind of, I'll say proprietary for now techniques to get a hold of them. It's not cold calling um, necessarily, although we do have people who do that, but ultimately that's just, that's just the numbers. It's not efficient, right? You could land a couple deals, but what we're doing is, is exponentially more efficient than that. Um, and then finding these deals off market. And uh, I mean, yeah, I, I give you an example. We have an agent right now on our team who has a cash buyer, uh, seven, the, this, these are the perimeter, seven to $13 million, uh, waterfront property in Tampa. Right. And so, um, rather than, you know, look what's on market, uh, which I, I'm sure that's where they started, but you know, so 
now we're basically reverse engineering it, finding property owners who meet those parameters and reaching out to those property owners uh, in a pretty efficient way. And when I last spoke to that agent, there was about eight or nine off-market interested sellers, off-market sellers that were interested in hearing an offer from that buyer that you never would have known about without what we were doing. And all of that process to find those sellers was done within an hour, right? So it's not like we're door knocking or anything like that. So that's the power of what we're doing. That's just one example that we're very excited about, uh, you know, especially if we get both ends of that deal. So um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of one of the things that we're really focusing on. Right. And, you know, going back to uh, the social media, you brought that up a couple of times about how, you know, that really has uh, catapulted things and, you know, maybe uh, you didn't, didn't quite know what it could do uh, for your business. Tell me about, you know, your, uh, your personal experience with social media. I noticed on your Instagram page, you're starting to put together the, you know, informational content, especially for those investors and uh, you know, things to help out potential uh, new investors in your market. Yeah. Yeah. So the power of social media is real. Um, I, uh, I know we were talking offline right before we started. I was kind of explaining that I've been doing this for 12 years now as an attorney. I opened my own firm last year. No marketing. No. I mean, and when I started, it was all referral and word of mouth. And when you're at a law firm, you don't necessarily need to when you're starting off, you don't need to market yourself. And then I was just with firms that that wasn't really part of the job description. And so I never really had to go out there and do it as much. And so what I realized with the Capstar stuff is, you know, we had the social media presence and that really propelled us into a different stratosphere, I would say. Uh, And so I kind of took those lessons and realized, you know, this is perception is reality and what you put out there, you have to stay top of mind. You know, I was uh, joking with you that people were still asking me if I still practice law, even though that's what I dedicated the majority of my time to because I don't post about it every day. I don't tell people what I do. So I'm making a more active effort and a more concerted effort to tell people, hey, look, this is what I do. This is how I practice law and giving them valuable insights. And what you realize after doing something for 12 years is, you know, this is like I have something to offer almost anybody that's an investor or a business owner, you know, um, whether it's contracts, whether it's an employment agreement, whether it's a non-disclosure, whether it's any sort of a real estate lease contract um, and even estate planning stuff. Now I'm doing an asset protection stuff. So any of that stuff, and, uh, most people in my world touch that at some point or another. And most people, if they don't know that you do it, they go somewhere else. And so the most frustrating thing I hear is, oh, I didn't know you did that, right? It's like, well, yeah, I do that, but how would they know that? And so social media for me has been a way to start putting out there, hey, this is what I know, this is what I do, this is how I can help you. And at the end of the day, it's all about helping people. And you know, if you're bringing them value, it's obviously gonna come back uh, 10X. So the social media is a a really is a good way in today's day and age to, to reach people. And that's, that's just the way that we communicate now. And so, uh, and providing value on social media is the real way uh, and not asking for anything, just giving, 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 and eventually it comes back. So um, it's, it's been exciting. I started my uh, attorney Bishoy handle on Instagram, uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, it's attorney Bishoy. Um, and it's been uh, very, I've gotten just such tremendous feedback and it's been less than a month now. So we're going to continue pushing through with that and, uh, I know it's going to be great. I was telling you, I got three people reach out to me this week alone, uh, texting me or messaging me on Instagram like, hey, uh, I, I saw you on Instagram. Uh, I would like to talk to you about X, Y, Z. So, um, you know, it's it's been awesome. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of times when uh, agents, you know, it- whether they are doing social media yet or not, but really, you know, that providing value and being consistent with it. I think a lot of times people get scared of the, the time commitment that it takes, but there are ways to really kind of um, make that more efficient. What are you doing to uh, create your content and get it, get it out there? So I've learned a valuable lesson in my business life and really in my real life, it's like time is the most uh, essential and important uh, asset we have, right? Like I didn't understand when they said like time is more important than money. When you're younger, you can't really understand that concept. Then you get older and you realize, oh, I I get that. That makes so much sense. 
my time is not best spent trying to figure out how to do X, Y, or Z, how to edit a video, how to cut a video, or how to do that. I don't, I don't, I will pay the best person to do the best job because I like quality. I will pay the best person to do the best job and save my time to do what I'm best at, right? And so when you ask me how I do it efficiently, I have, I hired somebody who I consider to be like the best person at what they do. They have a portfolio of, of several high profile clients. I was like, you're my guy. I'm going to take, you know, I want you to take care of me. I'm going to take care of you. And that saves me a tremendous amount of time, right? Because that person then tells me, Hey, why don't we think about doing this or think about doing that? And so that saved me a ton of time, um, in that regard. And that motto or that philosophy of just bringing in the best and having them, you know, run the show and then you just kind of follow. Uh, if it's not my area, I'm doing that all day. So that's really been uh, awesome. Obviously, I come up with the material, the content, you know, the substance of it. But in terms of, you know, just the creative aspects of it and what's trending and what's going to pop. I mean, that's something that I defer to uh, my social media guy on. And um, so. That's probably been uh, my favorite thing about it is, you know, the, the most efficient thing about it is having that person there. And I think as, as I do it, it's just going to become more natural. Like I was talking to my wife last night and I'm like, oh, this would be a good idea. Like that would be a good idea. So now a month in my my brain is kind of churning that everything could be ideas for things people want to hear about. Ultimately, that's all it is, you know, and, and what I've learned is it's not what I want to talk about because I want to talk about stuff that's way too boring, right? As an attorney, uh, you don't want to hear what I want to talk about. You want to hear what you want to talk about. So yeah, I had my first video go viral um, on Florida condo laws, which was pretty cool. So that was a couple of days ago. I got 30 something thousand views on it now. Um, so you, you learn, right, based on what people are liking and commenting and all that. So that's a good lesson. And now we'll continue to kind of talk about topics that people can relate to. Yeah. And on that topic of having a uh, an editor or a social media person out there, you know, I think a lot of times, uh, you know, people do social media. Uh, it, it's it is a marketing tactic. It is a way to get your name out there. But a lot of times people don't put the same uh, value on that type of marketing. Whereas, you know, if they were marketing a listing, you were going to pay the best photographer to get, you know, these things out there, you know, the, the listing in its best light. And so investing in that social media presence, it's just like, you know, just kind of budget that in as part of your marketing dollars. hundred percent, hundred percent. And I, and I had, I tried to cheap out on social media before, like it, it was early, earlier on, like in my practice, I was like, well, I just have to have a presence. And I paid someone like, that wasn't and and within a month i was like i'm just gonna wait till i can afford to pay someone good and then i'm gonna go you know all out because that's just my personality i don't like to i don't like to do a half you know whatever job um so i i had that experience i was like i'm not doing that i'm gonna wait and it, it's absolutely in a, a marketing expense it's absolutely worth the money um, the problem with social media, not the problem, but you have to understand with social media, you're not going to get on day one and find deals day two. You have to build and build and build. And that's just the way these algorithms are set up. That's just the way this, this works. You got to be on there for over a year is typically what you say, what they say before you see any sort of real traction. So people just have to be patient. And, and, and I'm not a patient person. I'm a very impatient person. I like things done when I like them done. So that's been difficult for me to wrap my head around, but it's already been, it's already exceeded my expectations from May 1st till today, 22 days. Um, it's already been, I already see the value in it. You know what I mean? I'll never not, I'll never stop what I'm doing at this point. I'll just keep adding more to it. Right. And there's that, there's also, you know, there's that, um, uh, unquantifiable value too. the whole time, yes. you know, when your yes. name comes up and somebody searches you and that page pops up, there's all that, you know, uh, you know, that content and all that, they, they there's so much trust already gained in you without ever actually having a conversation so that when the first phone call or the first email, that first contact with you, you've already set the groundwork with stuff that you did months ago, or even, you know, when you, after you've been doing this, you know, for a while, years ago, that content will still be there. So I'll tell you a little, uh, like kind of my, with my law firm stuff. So, um, as I mentioned, when I started for the first six months, it was 100% referrals. I didn't spend a dollar on marketing and that was good. It was, it was, it was 
you know, it wasn't like where I wanted to be, but I was fine with that. And then about six months in, I was like, this isn't going to work. So I started looking into marketing avenues and things like that. I ran a campaign on um, like Facebook and Instagram, and I got over 400, probably over five, about 500 leads at this point. My closing rate on the referrals, it's not 100% because nothing's 100%, but it's probably 95 plus percent. If you call me because someone else told you about me, you're coming and signing with me because I'm good at what I do. I'm responsive, I'm trustworthy, and I'm investor friendly. If you call me from a, a lead, what we're finding out, that closing rate is way, 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 way less. And so it's a lot more time trying to build credibility, trying to earn credibility. You don't know who I am because you found me on an ad. So you don't really know, am I good? Am I a scam artist? That was that has been extremely difficult to overcome. And there's nothing, I mean, you could say whatever you want to say, but there's a lot of scam artists out there. And so that was also part of the reason that prompted me to start this thing because it's social proof, right? So if you go on, if you find me online and you just want to check me out, you can go on my Google reviews. You'll see I have 45, five stars, no bad reviews. And if, you know, if you go on and you see, I don't have a lot of followers now, but if I had 50,000 followers or a hundred thousand, whether that's right or wrong, that, that makes you feel that I'm trustworthy. That's a different conversation, but it makes you feel that way. It makes you feel like, oh, he's legitimate. There's a lot of people following him. And so perception is reality again. So um, you're so right in that the intangibles, it's it's hard to quantify. You know, it's not like we got 10 leads this week from our Instagram. So the ROI is this. No, there's there's a branding element to it. There's a marketing element to it. And obviously those things are very difficult to quantify sometimes. Yeah. Have it, and you mentioned, you know, social proof. And I have to imagine just in the 22 days that you've been doing this and the success that you're having, that has to also be some really good proof for the agents within uh, the brokerage, you know, to if, if they aren't doing these things already to kind of push people ahead and say, look, it only took 22 days and I've already got three people reaching out to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's all about the quality of the content you put out. Um, and, uh, you know, it helps when it looks professional. It's got to be eye catchy. I mean, the reality is you still have to clickbait people. Um, you know, it, this was the big dispute with me and my creator when we started and we were shooting, con we were creating content. Like he'd be like, you have to say it like this. I'm like, that's, that's not how I talk. Like that's, that's a little bit clickbait. He's like, look, you got to provide good content, but you also have to appeal to people, right? You can't just, so I watch other attorneys and, and to be honest with you, as a real estate attorney, there's no good real estate attorneys on social media. There's not, I'm telling you, I did the research. There's a lot of PI guys, criminal, there's a lot of those guys, but real estate, there's no comps, there's no comparables. And so that's why it's exciting because I'm, I want to take that spot. But if you look at these guys, they're just like, you know, they're just staring in the camera. They're talking like this. They're telling you like the letter of the law. And that's how we're trained to talk. And uh, but that's not going to win the people over. Right. That's not going to get anyone excited. No one's going to share that. No one's going to engage with that. So you have to find a balance between, you know, giving good advice or giving good uh, thoughts or giving good insight, but also kind of keeping it fun and and exciting and and. Uh, relatable, right? That's the big thing we struggle with as attorneys is relatable. So, I mean, as agents out there, I think a lot of agents are trying to do social media. They're doing it maybe in a, in a way that's not going to, you know, not going to be the most beneficial. Social media is not just like posting still pictures of, you know, and that's what I started doing when I first did it. And I found out like static images don't play. It's not going to work. You got to create content, go walk around your showings, go, take videos, take a selfie of you on a Saturday at your uh, appointments or whatever it is, just show, create content, but give value too. Like, you know, nobody, nobody cares what you're doing all day. If it's not relevant to them, tie it into them, give them value, show them what you look for in a walkthrough, uh, do a home inspection with them, you know, with the camera and show them some stuff, talk about a deal that went wrong, talk about a deal that went right. Just, just do something, you know, but, ju but just keep it fun, creative, exciting and provide value. I think those are kind of the key points that you have to hit. Yeah, absolutely. And, and with your, um, with your content specifically, and I, I did watch the one you were mentioning earlier, the, the one that went viral about the Florida condo, you know, if tying in that, um, that condo collapse from several years ago, I mean, everybody remembers that, that, you know, instantly, you know, 
that instantly sucked me in. Cause like, I, I remember watching that, that news coverage and then seeing how that trickle down effect has affected investors and condo, um, uh, owners. Now, I think, you know, it was a really great way uh, to educate, you know, these um, these people looking to own condos, why the prices are going up and why it's maybe not a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that one uh, touched a lot of people in Florida. There's 1.5 million condos in Florida, and a lot of them are pretty dated, um, especially in South Florida. There's a ton of those. And I live in Tampa. Um, and I mean, St. Pete's got a ton of old condos. Um, so, You know, I mean, these condo fees are in the six figures. These special assessments are one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars. So imagine if you bought, imagine if you bought your condo twenty years ago. You know, it's like your home. You're not making a big income because back then you didn't have to. Like in the '90s or early 2000s, you could buy something and just be like middle, uh, uh, you know, uh, middle class and buy like a, a condo, right? And it's not like today. So. Imagine that, imagine you're on a fixed income or whatever, and you're not loaded, but the condo is worth a ton more, just appreciated. And then they come and hit you with a $150,000 assessment or $200,000 assessment. And there's no way you can possibly pay that. So um, it's been a crazy effect on the condo market in Florida. A lot of these associations are burying their head in the sand and pretending it's, it's didn't happen. I can't, I can't believe that's happening. This is only going to make things more expensive and more difficult for the owners there. But that's what got us in this mess to begin with is these um, property owners and HOAs were just kicking the can down the road, right? Pretending like they didn't have to replace the roof or the structural, uh, you know, parts of the condominium. And then, you know, here we are with a ton of deferred maintenance and a, and a Florida law now that this has to be done by February, uh, by January 1st of 25. So it's a really unfortunate situation for a lot of people. Um, but there's opportunities, you know, where there's, where there's, uh, you know, negatives, there's also opportunities as well. So, you know, if you have an older condo, maybe you should sell before they do those uh, studies. And if you're looking to buy, maybe you should buy one after those studies are done so you can get it on the low. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before I let you go, I, I do, um, you know, with the law, with the uh, real estate, you are all over the place. You know, I don't know how you have the time to do everything, but I also noticed, uh, do you, you have a, a sports management? You're in sports management as well. How did that yeah. all come about? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so probably about five or six years ago, I live in Tampa, like I said, so I'm a big Bucks fan. As you can see, my Mike Evans, my my favorite client right there. So when uh, we got approached, me, so it was me and two of my buddies, like two of my best friends. And uh, basically our quarterback at the time, his name is Jameis Winston. A lot of people know him, number one overall pick. And um, he, was the, he was the franchise quarterback. He was taken number one. So... Um, he had reached out to one of my friends and was like, Hey, can you help me with this like event just to kind of help put it on? Um, just, it was casual. It wasn't anything formal. And we're like, yeah. So he helped him out and he's like, Hey, could you guys help me like put on some actual events? Like, would you be in charge? And we're like, sure. So we started, (laughs) so we helped him put on his uh, first ever charity golf tournament in Tallahassee. We had over 60, um, we had over 60 former Florida State players. We had the new head coach at the time. We had uh, Bobby Bowden was supposed to show up. He got sick, unfortunately. We had a couple Heisman uh, Trophy winners at the event. And uh, and then from there, he's like, do you want to work with Todd Gurley? We're like, yeah. He's like, do you want to work with Le'Veon Bell? Do you want to work with Deshaun Jackson? And, and then the thing just kind of spiraled. Um, we were really heavy into it for a while. Um, and then it kind of slowed down a bit because it's, it's a lot, it's, it's fun, but it's a lot harder to make money in that business. It's super cutthroat and the agents get involved and they want to blow everything up. Um, which I can appreciate as an attorney, I get it. But, um, more recently we were working with the North Carolina men's basketball team and we got them some NIL deals. So that's, that was fun when we kind of dipped our toes in the NIL space. Um, which is the wild, wild west, which is about to get very regulated here uh, in the in the near future because of um, some craziness going on. So, yeah, that's how it all started. It's fun. It's cool. Um, I, you know, I have some players on the Bucks that are my clients um, that we've worked with um, clients as an attorney, but also we worked with, with the MBM agency. So 
Um, it's cool. It's fun to talk about. It's, it, you know, it's not a money maker, but it's fun to talk about. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I just, I just, I don't know how you have the time for everything, but you're, you're definitely, uh, finding success in all of it. Yeah. Yeah. We're well, working hard, working hard. It's, it's like, uh, it, it's years and years of a culmination of hard work. And then, you know, eventually it all pays off. So, um, finally kind of hitting that, at that point, which is nice. Right. And yeah, just, uh, before wrapping up, um, you know, you're just, you're not even a year into Capsar yet. What is, what's the immediate future? You know, what are the immediate future plans? And then what are some of the bigger, go- bigger goals for the company? That's a great question. I could talk about that for days. Um, so we are, uh, we have the brokerage, the traditional brokerage. Uh, with that, the future is non-traditional. Uh, we call ourselves a hybrid brokerage model. Um, and part of the reason is, yes, we have our retail brokerage. Yes, we have our retail agents who, who do retail stuff. Um, but like that deal I just explained to you, that seven to $13 million deal, that's, that's how we do things, right? It's, it's more off market. It's more, you know, just figure it out. We got a problem, solve it. It's not just let's go on MLS. Let's see what's listed. There's nothing that meets your parameters. Sorry, we can't help you. Right. So it's non-traditional marketing. It's non-traditional uh, campaigns to reach sellers, um, you know. So that's on the retail side. Um, we're also active investors, the, the same with Capstar Investment as well. Um, and so that company, that's obviously what's very exciting. Uh, and, and by the way, the commercial space we're starting to touch as well. So uh, we got gas stations now that we are in contact with a gas station owner. He wants us to list his next three gas stations. Those are uh, expensive uh, properties. So that'll be exciting to get into. And then obviously we're in the warehouse space. We have several warehouse contacts as well. So that's, we're going to break into that on the brokerage side. And then on the investment side, it's, you know, we're doing deals all over the country right now. Um, Assignments, wholesales, novations. um, And we're pretty close to starting to to buy and hold some of these properties, um, which is going to be uh, quite incredible for us. We have a team of uh, eight people, uh, full-time employees now, not on the brokerage side, but on the investment side that are just full-time working, finding deals, bringing deals to us, closing deals. Um, and so that's been awesome. That's definitely something we're excited about as well. And it's all just through non-conventional channels. You know, you got to get creative when there's that when interest rates are high, you have to find ways to solve people's problems. Um, but also we're not running to the bank on any of these deals. We've never taken a bank loan. And, uh, and so we have other sources of financing that's helping us close these deals. Um, and a lot of it's just connections in our network. So, um, those are the, that's the future of the company. Um, Six months in, I'm very proud of where we are. Uh, I don't know what it looks like. I mean, I know I have ideas of what it looks right. like in the next six months, year, five years, but I can't wait to see how it actually shakes out. Right. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the uh, taking the time to talk with us today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, if anyone you know needs help or wants to reach out, you can reach me. So the law firm is Levisy Legal. It's Bishoy at LevisyLegal.com. Uh, and then Capstar, obviously you know what we do. If I can ever help with, you know, legal needs, brokerage needs, anything like that, I'm always happy to help. Awesome. Yeah. We will definitely put that uh, all in the episode description. So it's nice and easy to find. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate you. I really want to thank Bashoy for joining us today. And I think it's incredible that he's finding so much success in so many different avenues. Remember to follow Bashoy at attorney Bashoy on all social media platforms. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.